Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'da habitifillah, a question was asked, As-salamu alaykum After I finish the Qur'an, inshallah, I want to memorize hadith, inshallah I've memorized Arba'ina Nawawi and I want to either start Umdat al-Ahkam or Bulug al-Maram What would you advise me with? Also, my method of memorizing hadith isn't consistent as I always change it have you heard of any tips, advices from any ulama you have come across that speak about memorizing hadith? Lastly, Arba'in is very short, so it doesn't take very long to finish. Lakin, Umdat al-Ahkam and Balug are very long, so would you say focus entirely on memorizing it rather than memorizing it along with another metan, meaning another text in a different uh, science? For example, Baluga Maram with Aqidah to Wasatiya, Jazakallah Khairan. Wa iyakum. And first and foremost, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for ilman nafi wa ruskin tayyibu wa amalun muttaqabbilan. And I will offer four quick advices, pieces of advice. And I've talked about this and offered advice. To others and there is a lot of beneficial information out there that many students of knowledge have uh, detailed in English and of course the ulama in Arabic and in other languages have detailed uh, extensively whether that be in Urdu, Hindi, Somali, uh, Gambian or you know Senegalese or uh, so many different languages the students of knowledge and the ulama in those countries have detailed it as far, as far as in English, there's a lot of information from Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah and some things that I can think about that I know a couple of people, a couple of the Tulab that, that talk about this, that, are, that both have, uh, you know, a good uh, record with this uh, in, in, in memorizing is uh, going to Hadith Disciple as well as the brother Abu Sajid and of course Sheikh Tahir Wyatt. Um, and um, Ali Davis and some of the other Tulab al-Ilm that are calling to the Sunnah in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and give a lot of advice in these uh, matters. Likewise, our Ikhwan, our brothers uh, in the UK like uh, Abu Taymiyyah and our brother uh, Abdurrahman Hassan and the many others and those who have more and those who have less to offer but there are many many students of knowledge out there so I would say first and foremost go to the many pieces of advice that they offer and the things to stay away from and the and the things that will assist you uh, just right off the top of my head I'll, I'll say just five quick things first I will say that you should start slow Okay, because as a, a statement of the Salaf, which means the one who memorizes all at once, they forget all at once. So meaning that, you know, it's tadaraj. Anything that you're doing when you're seeking knowledge and you're trying to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's in stages, it's, in, it's step by step. And as you said yourself, you have a difficulty in being consistent or having a consist, consistent methodology for memorizing. So I would say start slow. The second piece of advice I'd say is be consistent. Is that you have to be consistent. Strive your utmost to put yourself, even if it's not memorizing as much as you'd like to, but memorize, uh, be consistent. Try to do, if it's a hadith a day, if it's three a hadith a day, if it is two hadith a week, whatever the case may be, but if you're consistent and you have yourself your, uh, your own personal program that you know you can keep pace with, then you should do that because everyone's different. The bottom line is even when scholars give you advice and others give you advice, there may be some things that are consistent, but everyone is different from what time they are that they have allotted to, to study and memorize and from what their qudra, what their personal ability is. And this reminds me uh, of a couple of mashayikh we sat with, and this question was asked, like for one, uh, Sheikh Abu Salah al Afghani, Muhammad Hisham, and he mentioned uh, one important thing, and I've related this story many times, about how uh, due to inkita, 
through stopping memorizing uh, that some of his colleagues, people who started out seeking knowledge with him, now they call him and ask him questions because he was consistent in seeking knowledge. And this was in the time when he was living in Medina. So now, you know, the Sheikh has uh, moved on. And he's in Kuwait and he's graduated. That was many years ago. And, you know, so of course, Min Babel Ola, they're calling him and many people call him probably from around the world and benefit from him. And he's immensely beneficial. Another Sheikh that we sat with and asked this question was um, Sheikh Abdullah Mar'i Al Adani, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, one of our Mashaikh in Yemen, also Mufid Jiddin Jiddin. And the Sheikh, we had a beautiful personal sitting, mainly Westerners from Canada and the UK, UK and America. And we asked the Sheikh some of these very questions about, you know, what will help us in, in seeking knowledge. And one of the things I remember, he also related about the Inkita. And he said that when he, because uh, I believe he started some of his Talib al Ilm in Damaj during the time of Sheikh Mukbil, and then he came to Saudi and sat with Ben Othamin and others. And so he said that also, he, he told us that there was a, uh, a brother in Damaj with him at that time who used to memorize 50 hadith a day. But yet, after some time, you know, I, either he left Damaj or whatever he had to because of the, you know, things he had to do in the dunya, you know, working and this and that and the other, to where he totally stopped. So he went from 50 to none and then forgetting a lot of knowledge. And so this is also a reality too, is that, and it shows us the importance of consistency and consistency in Talib al -ilm, that the Inkita is one of the most, one amongst the many dangers and obstacles to Talib al -ilm, is the Inkita that will uh, paralyze your studies, it will paralyze your memorization, it will paralyze your acquisition of the Arabic language. Bye. The third point I want to mention is, of course, uh, leaving sin. That this cannot be overemphasized, as there are many athar, uh, athar of the Salaf, and that there are many uh, countless examples, and we know so many personal examples of where sin destroyed people's talib al ilm and also handicapped them from reaching their potential. The fourth piece of advice I'd like to offer is, which really should be in the first, so this is not in the necessarily the correct order, but it is to tawakkal ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be sincere. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands fi kitab al-kareem wa ma umiru ila liyabudullah mukhlisin ala hudin. And they were not commanded except to worship Allah alone uh, with sincerity. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, in the ma'amalu bin niyat, verily actions are tied to the intentions. And the Salaf used to say, Talib al ilm Talib al Jannah, seeking knowledge is seeking paradise. So it shows us, in order, of course, to get to paradise, you have to be sincere. That means you're worshiping Allah alone. You're not going to the graves, you're not going to the saints, you're not going to the dead, you're not going to this one, you're not going to that one. You're worshiping Allah wa ta'ala alone. And you're doing these things for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this, we need this reminder. And I'm glad you asked this question, so it reminds me. And so it's very important to be sincere to your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that goes, that moves on to, which is part and parcel of the same piece of advice, Tawakkal ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Tawakkal ala Allah azza wa jal, uh, as the ulama define, it means itimad ala Allah wa fi'l asbab. It means to rely solely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or maybe we should put in the better, in the next, in the other order, that you are, uh, you're making efforts to attain what you want to achieve, and then you're leaving the result with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're relying totally on Allah. For example, the one who wants to get married, they make an effort, they propose, they make the efforts, they get the mahar together, whatever the case, if it's a man or if it's a woman, she offers herself, whatever the case may be, they take the steps and then they leave the affair with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise, the brother or the sister who wants to earn an income, they make effort, they strive, strive to get a job, strive to start a business, strive in some way to get rizq 
from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then they leave the result with Allah. They applied for the job. They did everything they did. They took all the steps. They went to the university, if that's what your, your course, your path is, and they got the degree, and, and they're striving to obtain work, and, and then they just leave the result with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They went to, they've given applications, they've um, sat in interviews, they've done this, they've done this, or they got the tools to start their business. And then they rely on the result with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Atawakal ala Allah, i'timad ala Allah wa fi'l asbab. So it's very important, the habit Allah, that we, in relation to what we're talking about, seeking knowledge, that you you strive, you make every effort. You have to really strive if you really want to attain. As the Arabs say, "Men uh, wajid." So whoever strives, they attain some something. Woman zara, hasid, and whoever uh, plants seeds, they grow something. They get they get something from that. So you have to make those effort, and then you talk about Allah to see if you're going to get fruit from that tree, and that tree is your talab al-'ilm. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala Muhammad.